Stop. If you are planning on competing in Science Olympiad Ping Pong Parachute, then you need to watch this video. Hey, what's up guys? If you haven't met me before, my name is Faison and I've competed in Science Olympiad for the past seven years and have placed at the national level. And I'm here to teach you everything I know to help you kill it at your next competition. Before we get into the video, please be sure to leave a like if you enjoy it, comment any questions you have down below, and subscribe to the channel because I post new videos just like this every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. Before I tell you how to build the best bottle rocket for your ping pong parachute event, you first have to understand what that event is all about. And in very brief and simple terms, ping pong parachute is a competition where teams design a bottle rocket that deploys a parachute mechanism that holds a ping pong ball, where the, the team that extends the descent of the ping pong ball for the longest period of time wins. And in this video, we're going to be focusing on the rocket aspect of this event. If you want more information about the parachute aspect of this event, please leave a comment down below and like the video to let me know you want that video in the future. Perhaps the most important aspect of your rocket you need to optimize is the rocket's weight. And this is largely because you are restricted with the amount of PSI or pressure that you can use to launch the rocket into the air. So therefore, if your rocket is too heavy, the amount of PSI you can ha you have available to launch your rocket may not be enough to get your rocket to the highest point. Therefore, if you want your rocket to reach those highest points in the venue you're testing in, then you need to invest in a lighter rocket for your ping pong parachute event. And this will allow you to have more control over the height and allow you to reach those highest points. The second most important aspect of your rocket is the length of your rocket. And this is because of two different reasons. So the first reason is center of gravity and the second is the is because of your parachute. And when we discuss the center of gravity of your rocket, you really want the center of gravity to be right where the pressure vessel connects to the tube portion of your rocket. And the longer and longer the tube portion of your rocket is, the farther away the center of gravity of your rocket gets from that ideal position. So you're going to want to limit the length of the tube for your rocket so that the, the, tube, the center of gravity is at the point where the pressure vessel connects to the tube portion. Now, in addition to this, you're going to want to restrict the size of your bottle rocket for ping pong parachute primary, or because of the size of your parachute. And this is because if, you're, if the size of your rocket is too small, then when you place the parachute onto the rocket, then there may be a lot of tangling of the string for your parachute and that will cause your, your device to not function very well when you launch it. So in short, try to optimize the size of your rocket so that there's the center of gravity at the point where the pressure vessel connects to the, the two portion of your rocket and where the parachute will not. So the third thing we're going to talk about is the fins for your bottle rocket. Now, if you're a beginner to this event, you may be falling into the trap of over engineering the shape and surface area of your fins. And while that may have been important for previous events like bottle rocket, in ping pong parachute, the time the rocket is in the air is not a factor in your score at all. So in effect, the shape of your fins don't really matter. Yes, you need fins for your rocket to make it go straight into the air, but you don't need any of that engineered designs or big fins on your rocket to achieve the best results. 
Now, the only suggestion I would ask you to make would be to use very light but durable materials to make your fins. And this accomplishes two things. One is if your rocket crashes poorly, then you'll be able to use that rocket again without having to replace any of the fins. And the second is that it reduces the weight of your rocket and you're able to go a little bit higher. And finally, I'm going to give you a quick tip about your deployment mechanism. So when you're designing your deployment mechanism, I see a lot of people try to make super complex deployment mechanisms and it ultimately results in a failed deployment. Now, if you're a very new beginner and you have no idea where to start, then I suggest you try to start very, very simple. Like, just put the parachute on the tip of the rocket and launch it. And after you do that, you're able to analyze what went right and what went wrong and build upon your simple launching or deployment mechanism into something that's outstanding and great and will help you win at your competition. If you want another video about this, please leave another please leave a comment below telling me you want that and I'll get get it to you as fast as possible. All right guys, if you want to learn more about how you can build the best rocket for ping pong parachute, you can check out an article I made covering this exact topic. Also, please be sure to leave a like on the video if you enjoy it, comment down below any questions or concerns you have, and subscribe to the channel because I post new videos just like this every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. And I'll catch you guys later. Stay in phase.